What's up, Big Mac? You looking good, bro? Welcome back to Oklahoma. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> Let's check it out. We got home last night from Phoenix, Arizona. Fun fact of the day, we were sitting on a plane, my wife and I were sitting on a plane in Phoenix, Arizona, and the owner of GP Rents and Great Plains Kubota comes strolling down the plane aisle and was like, hey, I know you guys. <laughs> Crazy how you can travel the country and run into somebody you know. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Now we were getting on a plane to come back to Oklahoma, but we were in Phoenix, Arizona <laughs> and ran into people we know. So uh, yeah, we made it home last night about, oh, eight o'clock, you know, and since the time changed happened while we were gone, it gets dark at like, I don't know, it feels like 4 p.m. in Oklahoma now. It's, I mean, legit starts getting dark at like 5.30. Ugh, it's, gonna, it's gonna make for a rough go of the YouTube channel when it's all dark all the time. Anyways, come in last night and the creek, it's actually gone down quite a bit. The creek was up about another two feet. Apparently it rained while we were gone and apparently the temperature dropped. We left a sunny and 75 degree Phoenix, Arizona to come back to a dark, doomy, gloomy, wet, rainy, oh, uh, 40 degree Oklahoma. But hey, that's it. it is what it is. So I think, uh, I think I'll go ahead and take the uh, Kubota sidekick across the bridge this morning. It could probably make it across the creek right now, but I'm not going to risk it. My truck's parked on the other side, so all of our luggage and all of our everything from our trip didn't make it because we had to park and walk across in the dark last night. <sighs> oh well. Yeah, we do live in uh, some special circumstances in a unique area with that creek on our driveway. I, I absolutely know that. I grew up that way. I've lived here basically my entire life. I love it. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> it's cool. Nobody has that in their driveway hardly. But I do know one thing, that, that I, I married a very special woman because not very many ladies would agree to have that roadblock in the middle of their driveway and have to walk across the bridge on a dark cold rainy night to get home to their bed most women and most men would probably prefer to have a driveway where they pull off the paved asphalt road into their concrete driveway they hit a button on their car that opens their garage door they pull in shut the garage door get out and never get wet, never get cold. I, I just want to say thank you to my wife for <laughs> living through our tribulations. She's a very special person. Oh, I am not adjusted to these temperatures, you know? I, I mean, we got stranded on our way home from Arizona, but I'm starting to think it would have been better to get stranded in Arizona than on our driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Oh, man. Bear, did you miss me, buddy? I know Bella did because she's been wearing me out all morning. Did you miss me? Hey, Bear, did you take care of everybody while we were gone? So, I, while we were gone, what? Not enough loving? You need more love? While we were gone, I left Weston and Houston in charge of taking care of the animals. Now, I put the 17 year old with the muscle and the 7 year old with the knowledge because you. Yeah, I can promise you one thing Houston knows, and that is how to take care of all these animals around here. <sighs> they stayed with grandmas and everybody kind of bounced around because they still had school. Woo, lighting's terrible. We didn't take the kids on that trip, and it, it is what it is. I, I, we had so much fun. That four, I guess it was four days in, in Phoenix at, at the conference. Was, it was just awesome. It's so nice to be able to get away 
just as a couple every once in a while and recharge your batteries, recharge your brain. Um, that conference especially was, was really cool um, mentally. You got to get out and I encourage you to find a way to keep learning every day. And going to conferences like that, just it absolutely recharges your brain. It's just like working out. You, if you're going to keep your body in shape and not get a big old fat double chin, like me, you know, kind of, kind of got the double chin thing going. But if you're going to stay in shape, you got to work out. If you're going to keep your brain in shape, you got to exercise that booger. Keep it active. Learn something. And uh, conferences like the one we went to in Phoenix are amazing for things like that. They just recharge your mind, your body, your soul, everything. So, and I feel like I'm going to need it dealing with these goats that are out there. They don't like the rain. Neither do I. But they hate the rain, so I'm gonna give them a little feed. And apparently Big Mac's hungry too, if you missed that. Hey, boys, what's up, girls? And, and, and gentlemen. Everybody doing all right? Hungry, I see. Yeah? Hungry? Hungry? Oh, looky there. What's up, Dolly? How are you? Um, I'm sorry, you're Tina. That's Dolly. I got them backwards. That's Tina, Dolly, and Lucy. Alpacas are doing good. They act like they're hungry, too. I'm telling you what there, Lucy. You are one fluffy little animal. You, you should not get cold this winter. You girls hungry too? All right. Come on, Dolly. I got a serious question. Did you miss me while I was gone? Hmm? Did you miss me at all? No? Yeah. Good talk. Excuse me, Rufus. Coming through. What's up, Big Mac? You looking good, bro? You looking mighty fine, if I do say so myself. A lot of people always ask, you know, questions about, like Big Mac, um, how in the world can you raise an animal like that and enjoy it like a pet almost but then know in the back of your mind that that's a terminal life that that life is not going to be here very long that that animal's life is intended to end soon like it's a short-lived life how can we raise an animal knowing we're going to butcher it and if you've never lived this lifestyle, if you've never been on a farm or you've never been in a situation where you've raised your own food, it's just hard to explain. There's a difference in an animal like bear or Bella. Well, even bear and Bella, for instance, serve two different purposes. Bear is a livestock guardian. He is a pet and I do like him, but he has a purpose. He's on our farm for a reason and that's to protect our livestock from predators. Bella, on the other hand, <laughs> is a pet who is intended to be a couch protector. Um, she's just a companion dog. We, <laughs> we just enjoy her. So those are two dogs with two totally different purposes. Then you break it off into something like, like uh, meat goats or, you know, you can't see and it's dark and it's muddy, but Big Mac there, for instance, you know, we, we bought him as a small calf earlier this year with the intended purpose that he would be butchered and put into our freezer for food for our family. And that's where a lot of people have a hard time. They can't grasp the fact that, that while we know their purpose, we still enjoy their life. We still give them a happy life. 
And I know that's hard for some people to understand, but if I'm gonna bring an animal onto this farm with the intended purpose of being for food, I want that animal to have the best life possible. And I'm gonna enjoy them. I, yeah, it's hard for some people that they, I know some people get attached and they wanna disassociate themselves from that ultimate ending of that animal being cut up and put in a freezer. It's, it's easy to want to disassociate yourself but you're not ever gonna grasp what's going on here if you don't take it serious and let yourself, I'm not saying get attached to those animals, but enjoy them while they're here. I mean, our lives are no different. We're only on this earth for a set number of days. None of us know how many days that's gonna be. Just like Big Mac right there has no idea how many days he's gonna be here. But I'm going to give him the best life I'm gonna give him the best feed. I'm gonna to try to keep enough hay and straw and bedding on the ground so he doesn't get all laying in mud and pee and poop in there. But our lives are the same way. Yeah, we're not destined for somebody's freezer, but we're gonna die. We're only here for a certain number of days. And uh, I believe, I truly believe that, that we serve an amazing God who wants us to have the best life possible. And it's kind of our job to, to figure that out in this life we are gonna have trials and tribulations and troubles, but we serve a God who, who wants us to have the best life possible, no matter how long we're here on this earth. Some of us are only gonna be here for, you know, six months. Some of us are gonna be here for 60 years. Some of us are gonna be here for 100 years. I've got a, a great aunt who is gonna be turning 111 this month. I believe it's 111. She has seen a whole different world than so many people get to experience, but you know, like when we were at the United Conference, one of the speakers talked about um, a baby that she lost. She had to carry this baby knowing that it was gonna die within a day or two after it was born. And she chose to carry that baby as long as possible instead of aborting it because that life meant something to her. And she told an incredible story about how a child that only lived for a few hours completely transformed her life, her husband's life, her marriage, her family in so many positive ways. That baby who never spoke a word and was only on this earth for a very limited time changed people's lives. And uh, I know it's kind of odd, kind of awkward, but Big Mac there, a goat that's gonna be processed in, you know, next year, or us. We only have a limited amount of time on this earth, so we're gonna make the best we can of it and uh, enjoy every day you can. And just remember, God put you here for a reason. You have a purpose, you have a gift, and it's up to you to figure out what your gift is, what your purpose is, and to share it with the world. We're here to serve others. If you're here just for you and your own pleasure and your own fulfillment, you're never gonna understand the true meaning of life. We're put on this earth to serve others, to serve God and to serve people. So figure out how you're gonna do that. And eat beef and eat goat and eat chickens and raise them and be happy and be merry. Ha! Huh, how do I end up on a rant like that? Talking about raising a steer to process and the meaning of life comes out of it. I don't know. Random rants with Daniel, I guess. Well, outside chores are done. I'm going to go in and warm up my ears. They're about to freeze off. I'm telling you, I'm not kidding. I got used to that Phoenix weather. And it blew my mind how many people left comments on our last video when we were in Phoenix that said, hey, you're in my neighborhood, you're in my area, you're five minutes from me, you're 30 minutes from me, you're an hour from me. I had no clue we had so many subscribers in the Phoenix, Arizona area. That is, it's just crazy. I, I, you just never know. But anyways, this video was kind of random, but we made it back home. We might've got stranded, <laughs> you know, a quarter mile from our house for a little while. Had to walk in in the dark, but sorry for the, the random Daniel ramble, rant, soapbox, chat, whatever you wanna call it. Sometimes I just get, to, my brain gets to go and I get to thinking and get to talking and next thing you know, I just vomit it all on you guys on YouTube. But <laughs> I, like I said earlier, do something with your spouse, do something with your family every now and then, get together, make special events 
about family. We do a lot of cool stuff. I, I, I know my family's blessed and we get to travel and go and do things and, and we've worked hard to get to where we are. But I know God has blessed us in so many ways. And uh, I want to do my best to, to encourage some of you guys. I, I really like sitting down and, and giving some of those little random Daniel chats or rants or talks or whatever. It, it's not planned. I, didn't even, I don't plan that stuff. It just kind of rolls out sometimes. But it seems like some of you guys like that stuff. So maybe we can make that a more mm, set deal. Like a one video a week. Or, I don't know. I'm just maybe something. But anywho, I guess that's all I've got for today. I'm going to get in the house and warm my ears up. Go, go make me a little coffee. Seriously, because it's like, this temperature's dropping. It's supposed to get down in the 30s with freezing rain and nastiness. So, ah, I'm going to go in the house and enjoy my life in there since we're not in hot Arizona anymore, bear. Huh. What do you got on your nose? You got a big old booger there? Or is that Bella slobber? <laughs> well, guys, sorry you didn't get to get Houston involved in the video today. He's at school with the time change. Everything uh, kind of gets thrown off now. It's gonna be it's gonna be work to get Houston in videos. So weekends are for him now for video time because get dark at 5:30 when he gets out of school at three. That makes it tough. But anyway, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.